This is our traffic safety class. Today we are going to have a demonstration. I am the safety teacher holding the microphone. Now you have all heard people say, oh, I've got good brakes. I can stop on a dime. Well, people who say that are wrong. The truth is you can't stop on a dime and we're going to show you why, but we need your help. Will those who want to help Officer Harrison please raise their hand? Well, let's take Susie and Joe. They're going to help us all learn a very important safety lesson. First, Joe is going to show us whether he can stop on a dime. Officer Harrison is telling Joe when I give the signal, he should start running. When he hears Officer Harrison blow his whistle, he should stop as quickly as he can. Are you ready? Go! Here is where Joe heard the whistle and tried to stop. But here is where Joe actually stopped. Joe ran 11 feet 4 inches from the time he heard the whistle to the time he stopped. He certainly did not stop on a dime. Now it's Susie's turn, but she's going to walk. Ready, Susie? Go! No, Susie didn't stop on a dime, but she did stop much faster than Joe. From the time she heard the whistle to the time she stopped, Susie moved only three feet six inches. Now we can all see why it is safer to walk than to run, because we can stop faster. And it's something all of us should remember when we cross a real street. Never run like Gary, but always walk like Jill. Then you'll have plenty of time to stop. And another thing, never cross a street in the middle of a green light. Why? because it may change to yellow before you get all the way across. Always wait for a new green light. Then look to your left, to your right, back to your left. Then you can walk all the way across safely without hurrying. Here on a real street, Gary and Jill have a green light but they don't start to cross. They're smart. They don't want to get caught in the middle of the street when the light changes. So they wait for the new green light. Then they look to their left, to their right, back to their left. Let the automobile pass, and then they cross the street safely without hurrying. Some boys and girls who ride bicycles think that because they have the finest mechanical brakes that they can stop on a dime. Well, let's see if they can. Fred and Lila here have been riding their bicycles to school for the past year. They're very good riders and they keep their brakes in the best condition. But now let's see if they can stop on a dime. Fred first. Are you ready? Go! Now, let's see. From the time Fred heard the whistle to the time he put on his brake, he rode... 8 feet 2 inches. This distance we call the thinking distance. It is the distance he rode from the time he heard the whistle to the time he put on his brake. 8 feet 2 inches. But there is also the stopping distance. After the brake was on, the bike traveled 12 feet 4 inches. 
Altogether, he traveled 20 feet, six inches. Now here comes Lila. Let's measure her distance. From the time she heard the whistle to the time she put on her brake, Lila rode. Twelve feet, four inches. What do we call this distance? Thinking distance. Lila's thinking distance was twelve feet, four inches. And her stopping distance was 16 feet, 3 inches. Altogether, she traveled 28 feet, 7 inches. Because it takes such a long distance to stop a bike, like Jill, we must be very careful. Jill knows about the thinking distance and the stopping distance, so she always coasts down a hill, keeps a good lookout to make sure that no matter where a car may come from, she'll be able to stop her bike safely. Now, Officer Harrison is going to show us something that everybody should know about automobiles. Automobiles have blind spots. Now, if you'll lean forward just a little, Officer Harrison will point out an automobile blind spot. There's one. Now, by putting your hand out in front of your face like this and closing one eye, you can make a blind spot. Try it. Just as your hand blocks part of your view, so an automobile blind spot blocks the driver's view. Right now, you are all hidden from the driver's view. Can the driver see any of the children? No, he can't. The driver can't see you because you are hidden by the automobile's blind spot. Now, if you'll walk forward, the driver can see you. There are many other blind spots on an automobile. Here. 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 And most cars have even bigger blind spots than this car. Watch for the blind spots. And whenever you cross a real street, wait like Gary and Jill. They see the blind spot on the car and they know that the driver may not see them, so they wait until the car goes by, then they cross the street safely. Here is the right way to cross traffic lanes. Wait till the car in the lane stops completely, then cross to the next traffic lane. Stop, look down the lane, wait for the car to stop completely, then cross. In this way, you cross traffic lanes safely. Remember, whenever you cross a real street, like Gary and Jill, stop and look down each traffic lane and wait for the car in each lane to stop completely, then cross. Do this for every traffic lane. And now let's see if a driver of an automobile can stop on a dime. Officer Harrison has put a detonator on the bumper of the car. A detonator is like a double-barreled shotgun. Here are two blank cartridges, one for each barrel. The detonator triggers inside the car, so Officer Harrison will sit beside the driver, and this time, instead of blowing his whistle to stop the car, he's going to press the trigger and set off the first cartridge. When the driver steps on his brake, that will set off the second cartridge. Now, here they come at only 23 miles an hour. From the time the driver heard the first cartridge go off to the time he stepped on the brake, his thinking distance was... 23 feet, 8 inches, and the stopping distance was 27 feet, 7 inches. Altogether, he traveled 51 feet and 3 inches. 
proving beyond any doubt that you can't stop on a dime. Thank <laughs> you.